Whole Builders, thank you for joining me today. We're going to have a great conversation about healthy air. You know, I think we can all agree that when discussing your average single family home, new homes have advantages over existing homes. They're more efficient, they offer newer technologies that allow us to pair the home's functions to our mobile devices and other smart devices. They have higher ceilings, smarter locks, and they promise years of deferred maintenance. And of course, they have healthier air. Don't they? What is healthy air? That's what we're going to discuss today. And while the definition is a little fluid and a little undefined, there are certainly aspects of it that we can all agree on. For one, it's air that doesn't make you sick. It's air that doesn't make you dehydrated when you wake up in the morning, doesn't give you a dry mouth, doesn't make you sneeze during allergy season, won't make your lips chapped, it won't irritate your eyes, and it won't give you a headache. And of course, it's not filled with noxious gases or other types of chemicals that tend to build up in our air and can lead to harm down the road. Most of all, it's not filled with a microscopic, pointy little protein that we know can bring the world to its knees, which brings us to what we've learned in the year 2020, or I should say, what we've relearned in the year 2020. Because the things we're going to talk about today are not new. The problems have been around for centuries and the solutions have been around for decades. Let's go back a little over 70 years, post-World War II. The work environment is changing. People have left these outdoor jobs on farms, less labor jobs, and we're moving into offices. And simultaneously, as this happens, people start to feel sick when they're at work. They're complaining of headaches, nausea, they feel tired. And this just gets worse through the 60s and the 70s. As we bring more equipment into those office buildings and cram more people in, the situation seems to get worse. Is it psychological? Is it just a terribly contagious case of the Mondays that has the whole country feeling ill when they're at work? Well, it, that seemed possible for a while, but the World Health Organization looked into it, and by the end of the 1980s, they had identified sick building syndrome as the cause of this problem. And what sick building syndrome was, was not that the building was sick, but that it was making the people in the building sick because the air in it was not purified, it, it wasn't fresh, there was no introduction of outdoor air. Much of this was due to the fact that these newer office buildings were much more energy efficient, so they didn't have the higher ceilings and increased airflow that you found in some of the older buildings. Fast forward to about 10, 20 years ago, and we started to see the same problems arising again in residential new construction. We tightened up the envelope of that home, and lo and behold, we started feeling more unhealthy in our homes. And if you think people get upset when they feel unhealthy at work, they really don't like it when they feel unhealthy at home. And that's the reason that we had to find a better solution. So what we're going to do today is break down what is healthy air in new homes, and what can you do about it to deliver true peace of mind to your home buyers. When we talk about healthy air, there's four main attributes that we want to talk about, and there's roughly four different ways they impact the air in our home. So those four attributes are freshness, which is how much outdoor air are we bringing inside? Are we recirculating the air that's in the home? Are we getting fresh air in there? You guys would know that as ventilation. In many places, some form of ventilation is dictated by code, and as our homes have gotten tighter, there's been no escaping the fact that we need to bring more fresh air into them in order to have them to be healthy spaces. It's gonna depend on how much air you need to bring into by code, how tight your envelope is in the home, how much of that air is leaking back out again, and probably most importantly, how much are you going to condition and purify that air before you deliver it to the living space of the home. Another important attribute of indoor air quality is humidity both the addition of and the removal of excess moisture in the air. This is done through humidifiers and dehumidifiers. And it's, it's more important than you might think. It impacts the ability for mold to grow and proliferate in the home, mildew. It can lead to odors. If you're asthmatic or have allergies, it can greatly impact how severe those symptoms are and even whether or not you experience the conditions at all. So for that reason, we do need to control humidity. The reason dry air is bad is that when air is dry, it's thirsty, and it wants to parch its thirst, and it does that by pulling moisture out of our skin, our hair, our eyes, even the floor that's under our feet. If you've ever seen a wood floor that's cracked and checked, that's a direct result of air that was too dry. So mitigating dry air not only helps with the health of the occupants in the home, but it actually helps the physical health of the home itself. It helps preserve the wood and all the work that's gone into it. Instruments, paintings, trim, all the things that are in the house that the homeowners bring with them will be better protected. It's extremely important to deliver properly humidified air in new homes. Temperature, I think we all know what temperature is, so we won't spend a lot of time on that, but it is an important part of health and comfort in the home. And probably most importantly is purity. Air purity is, is what we get when we add better filtration to homes. And the reason it's so important is it removes the physical particulate, the particles that are in the air that can make us sick. 
as you know, the filters that come with most or that you'll see in a standard furnace are really, are really there to protect the blower motor, the equipment itself. Nowhere near as strong as some of the other things that are now on the market that we're going to talk about today. Those of you familiar with Indoor Air Plus know you need to have at least a MERV 8 filter. But you might not know that it goes much higher than that. MERV 11, MERV 13, all the way up to MERV 16. If you're not familiar with what MERV is, it's minimum efficiency reporting value. And really what it's telling you is that when this filter was tested, these are the size of the particles that it was able to capture to a certain percent. Where this really gets important for you to understand is when are you capturing PM 2.5? And PM 2.5 is the smallest, most damaging particles that we find in the air. It's cook smoke, it's different kinds of health damaging dust, it's what's put into the air when you light a fire in the fireplace or when you burn brownies in the oven. And it's, it's really dangerous, it builds up very quick and it stays in the air for a long time. So being able to capture that is extremely important and we're able to do that now with MERV 13 filtration. So what options do we have for our homeowners that want to take care of particulate in their air? There's two basic forms of air purification. One is a portable air purifier. Probably what your customers are most familiar with, they've seen them in stores, they've seen them online, they've seen the ads where it sucks all the smoke out of the air. And portables have a very good place in the home. There are definitely times when they're uh, the, the best solution if you don't have a forced air system, if you live in an apartment, if you're somewhere with, that doesn't have an installed product. But if you're buying a new home, why would you want to have to go out and buy four or five different portable air purifiers when your builder could offer you the chance to have a whole home solution on this? So what are those improvements? Well, energy efficiency. Believe it or not, good indoor air quality is often synonymous with better energy efficiency. When we make ourselves comfortable in the home by controlling humidity and temperature in the right balance, we can actually make a more energy efficient home. We can preserve the home. Uh, just like people, wood in the home does not like to be too dry or too moist. When that happens, it swells, it cracks, and eventually it gets damaged. So we can preserve the home longer and make good on that deferred maintenance that we've promised new home buyers. Comfort. All of these things impact comfort. Comfort and health are sometimes intertwined, sometimes they're not. Comfort's a little more subjective than health, I think. But all of these things together will make people feel more comfortable, and when they feel more comfortable, they feel more healthy. And last of all, health. They're going to be more healthy. Scientifically, this is true and why these products really do make a difference and why offering them to your buyers is the correct thing to do. So those are the four different attributes of air purity and the impact that they have on the people that move into your homes. I think the most exciting part of it and what we've learned in, in 2020 is that the technology is out there, that there is something we can do about these invisible invaders that can cause damage to our health. So as a new home builder, this is a true benefit that you can offer to your buyers that they're not going to find in an existing home, that they're not going to find in a home where these products are not standard. These are truly solutions that will make them feel healthier, will allow them to breathe easier, take care of their family, take care of their pets. Everyone in the home feels better when they have healthy, clean air. And that's why at April Air, we believe every home deserves healthy air, and we will work with you to choose the correct products for the application and style of your home to deliver these solutions.